Hello, thanks for the recording, Scott. I know a lot of people are going to be interested in watching that uh, this evening. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. Hello, Scott. All right. So, yeah, back to the uh, normal uh, grind. We kind of took a two-week hiatus with uh, the annual meeting of everybody that works at Trade Ideas across the country, flying into one location and plotting how we're going to take over 2018. And the uh, last week was test drive, so we had uh, a a lot of tire kickers coming in trying to get them up to speed quickly on our awesome product and um, you know show them some tricks so I'm glad Scott actually did that poll uh, the poll that shows there are people in here that are still kind of uh, spilling over from last week's test drive because I think we'll save you know 15 minutes uh, at the end of the content today uh, to go over just some basic questions that um, newer users may have but um, nonetheless we do have some prepared content and uh, here we go welcome to trade of the week january 30th 2018. all right glad everybody can see and hear us i see some familiar names in there thank you guys the uh, typical disclaimer um we are not registered investment advisors we're not brokers we did not take those tests that ask you ad nauseum about um uh, you know, clients and um, uh, all that stuff. The word escapes. What's the word, Andy? I'm looking for. I'm um, sorry, Steve. I was. Um, uh, <laughs> I, hate I hate it when I can't think of can't think of a word. Um, Finish. Start your sentence again. I'll help you. <laughs> we're not registered advisors and we're not brokers. Those guys. Fiduciary responsibility. No, there you go. There you go. We have not gone through the fiduciary responsibility factor and have been um, ordained as such put it that way so what you're seeing here is a software as a service company just doing a quick webinar to show you guys some of the tools look at some of the uh, uh, charts talk about the market a little bit and of course the trade of the weeks so we've had a couple we will go over those as well um, yes Andy's right smack in the middle of uh, the uh, New York Times crossword puzzle <laughs> no I bet he was typing answers um, so okay back to disclaimer uh, nothing you see or hear should be uh, construed as investment advice. Um, if you need investment advice, you've got to go seek out the guys uh, that are authorized to do so uh, with their brokerage licenses. So with that out of the way, good to know. Um, first slide, as always, you're not alone with trade ideas. Uh, we're going through record growth. Uh, as we speak right now, we are at uh, record high net subscribers. And uh, last month was just a smashing uh, revenue month for us as well. So. Uh, growing on leaps and bounds. We've got some new people joining the uh, the firm uh, throughout the year. We'll probably introduce some of those. But what we really pride on and how I think we really retain and, and bring people in is our onboarding concierge service. And so this slide is entitled, You're Not Alone with Trade Ideas. Um, primarily because if you'll see joining the live trading room there, the live trading room is a way in which I'm going to mute Muted. one. All right. The live trading room is a way in which uh, you can come in every day and see Barry Anderson hosting a free live trading room. He hates to call it a chat room, and I agree with him. It's a live trading room. And in that room um, is himself trading his own account using Trade Ideas technology and hundreds and hundreds of uh, other people um, either following along or putting their two cents in about what they're watching or maybe they're sharing some scans or talking about scans and how to find something using the Trade Ideas platform. So it's kind of the focal point during the week of uh, the Trade Ideas community and the best part is it's free. I think that word's getting out and some of the other people who run uh, chat rooms and live trading rooms are not exactly happy to hear that they're competing with a free service that's uh, doing extremely well. So very proud of that. Barry's done a great job for a couple of years now. Um, the weekly webinars, which is what you're listening to right now, the 2 o'clock Eastern webinar schedule. did one yesterday with Jamie at the helm. I helped him a little bit and today is my day to talk about trade of the week. Uh, tomorrow is uh, another question and answer demo of the product using uh, CEO Dan Merkin, who's back in town, along with Brad Williams. Uh, those are the two guys who basically uh, sneak off in the dark and figure out where this product is going to be six months from now. So two very key uh, founding members of the company. And then Thursday is Andy's turn to come up with some content, and Jamie rides shotgun with Amy with Andy uh, Friday support sessions now this is something that we added uh, with the the one-on-one -on -one sessions getting a little backed up we've made ourselves available for three hours every Friday it's come one come all all you have to do is be on the webinar mailing list and you will get a confirmation 
don't forget to check your spam folders, people. I did have a couple of people ask me today about the webinar, and it was sitting in their spam folder. So regardless of what ISP you use, it could always be in there as well but the Friday support session is open to everybody and there is no agenda it's basically come one come all and we just start going right with the first question second question third question so it's a great way for newer users to kind of come in and get up to speed quickly or even the regular advanced users that we see uh, week after week um, to uh, come on in and get more continuing education um, so um, more to come on um, how we're going to be handling our education and our support sessions. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but there'll be some changes coming this spring because we're growing and we're trying to be as efficient as possible. Did I say we were growing? Well, this slide is actually outdated, Scott. We're probably going to want to update this slide because we are hiccuping up to the next level up in this blue area here. Uh, the subscriber growth is nothing short of impressive. And again, I think a lot of it has to do with the amount of attention and support and onboarding and concierge uh, offers that we do offer the new trader because we recognize this is a very intense program. With a lot can be done with it. And even 30 days you know, can come by and come and go really quick. So those Friday support sessions, I highly recommend joining them if you have not joined them yet. Uh, we're getting great feedback from them. And there's our subscriber growth. Uh, a quick nod again to the product that is still in beta, but it is an auto trading uh, tool. It's called Brokerage Plus, and it works exclusively through interactive brokers. So basically, um, you need to have an interactive brokerage account, and you also need to have a premium Trade Ideas Pro account. And if you have both of those, you're already enabled and grandfathered um, under the beta program. So I want to backtrack just a moment and say if you're a new trader and you've only been trading the markets live for two or three months, this is not for you. This is for people who have honed in a strategy and trust their strategies and trust their, their risk reward management and have a pretty good idea of how to handle um, market environments. So if you're a new trader, please, you know, give this a little time before you start to investigate auto trading because auto trading is basically, you know, um, intermediate and advanced traders tracking what they know to work uh, from their own custom scans and their own custom methods that might make no sense to you whatsoever, but they know and trust and can turn on the machine and turn their back and let the, um, the uh, brokerage plus tool that communicates between trade ideas and interactive brokers execute trades for you and manage risks and stops and such. We don't really talk too much more about Brokerage Plus in our webinars, but we do mention it here in this opening slide. So if you're interested in more information, again, it's for intermediate and advanced, um, you could get it at trade-ideas.com forward slash download or the old uh, info at trade-ideas.com, which is our main uh, incoming triage email uh, account, we can route that question to somebody who has much more information to give you. But this is coming. It's probably going to be the future for some traders. Uh, it's not for me, but that doesn't mean it's not for you. Um, but uh, making you know strides, and hopefully we'll get this thing out of beta here in a month or so. And then it was going to become an actual paid product. So if you're using it now, you're grandfathered in. You'll never have to pay for it. Okay, we got two subscriber growths in there. How'd that happen? All right, man and machine combined. I actually got a little bit I want to add to this, and I apologize for the people that also attended yesterday's webinar because I'm going to say the same thing here. But I think it really, really rings true with this Paul Tudor Jones quote, who's a great money manager trader, by the way. And that quote is, no man is better than a machine, and no machine is better than a man with a machine. And so that's basically the idea of Trade Ideas AI technology using Holly. It's a sophisticated alert, but it's not a standalone machine product that's going to take you to the promised land. It's to be used in conjunction with humans. Just like Watson, the AI, uh, went through an oncology report, came back three months later, and blew away the oncology department with treatments of certain DNA sequences that the AI caught that the humans didn't catch immediately or maybe would have taken them three months to catch. So there's a great example of how AI works very well in conjunction, man and machine together. And again, I apologize for those that heard this again, but we got the Super Bowl coming up and it's my contention. I'm not a New England fan by any means. I like a couple of their players. But why is New England so good at coming back in the second half and winning these games? including last year's Super Bowl. Well, 
I'm convinced that they've been ahead of the curve for about two years using machine intelligence and artificial intelligence. And Amazon Web Services just actually did confirm it that all the uh, teams are now available to use Amazon Web Services machine learning, which essentially takes every play and every player and and documents their emotion, their blocking schemes, their pass routes, their defensive routes, their blitzing. And so the game of football and the NFL level is kind of coming to a new uh, chapter here, guys, and it's man and machine. Basically, what I'm convinced is that uh, New England basically just plays the first half, and that first half is them just gathering data. And then they dump that data into their AI at the halftime, and the AI is going to suggest a couple of scenarios for halftime adjustments for offense and defense. And there's a great example of man and machine working together. And I firmly believe I'm kind of early on that, but I, I think that's one of the, success, the secrets to the success of New England. For those of you who don't care about NFL, thank you for indulging me on that. But it really is um, applicable to what we're talking about when we talk about machine learning and the human and machine approach. All right. I but want that. Uh, I want that liquid metal guy from Exterminator on my team, man. <laughs> Which, who, who is he? What's that? You remember from Exterminator, the 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 kind of the liquid metal guy who could, you know, from the original Stermi Exterminator. <laughs> I could, uh, if you know, you, uh, you have to uh, remember. I'm the, drawing the, a blank. The bad, the bad guy, man, who he was basically liquid. Unmuted. Terminator um, two, Philip. Okay, maybe. Terminator. Yeah, Terminator. Terminator. Okay. He's talking about Terminator two. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. All right. Yeah. Anyway, that was Terminator, yeah. Liquid Metal Man, Terminator there 2. You go. <laughs> okay, so here we are, uh, January 30th. Market recap, have a few things to talk about. Holly recap, we have a little to talk about, but whatever little we talk about is very important. Uh, the trade of the week, which is the actual name of this webinar, and since we had a couple of weeks off, we can go back and take a look at a couple of the past uh, trades of the week, um, where they are now, how they did, and what might become of them if the market uh, continues, you know, a little bit of uh, selling like we had today, but we'll get into that. Uh, I'll take a moment to remind people that there is a new beta version available, so when you look at my screen and you see my charts and some of the... Uh, some of the indicators on my charts, uh, chances are you're on the production version of uh, 4.2.5. And don't ask me the logic of this. This is the logic of developers and programmers, but 4.2.2 is actually a newer version. And uh, I'll show you guys visually how you can get a copy of that um, beta version. And then, as we said, uh, it's good to know that there's a good uh, contingency of uh, final test drivers um, in here today. So we're going to hold you know, 10 or 15 minutes at the close of the session. Uh, just for some basic questions, you know, for people who need uh, those basic questions to decide you know, if they want to go ahead and, and sign up with us. So uh, that's our agenda for today, January 30th. And let's get started by looking at the markets. Um, again, I don't know how many of you were in yesterday's webinar, hopefully a few of you. Um, because what I had mentioned in yesterday's webinar was we had nothing but inside days. We had an inside day in the spider there. The low and the high was inside Friday. Uh, Dow, we had an inside day from Friday. Um, QQQ, the NASDAQ, we had an inside day from Friday. But I said those candles by themselves didn't really throw up a whole lot of caution flags. An inside day can many times just be the, uh, the entree to a full a flag or a consolidation continuation pattern. Well, I said that could be the case, but there was one thing that bothered me. And again, for those of you who tuned in yesterday, hopefully this uh, made an impact. Um, let's look at the spiders again yesterday, uh, pretty much close to highs, a little bit of a red candle. But what happened in the VIX yesterday, the insurance policy for downward markets? This green candle basically broke out of this base and just shot up and closed on highs yesterday as the markets were putting in inside days. So this was kind of a, hmm, that's interesting, a bit of a red flag. Well, now that we have more information, we have more of it, uh, 24 hours more information than we had yesterday, uh, we had a nice gap down in the market overnight. And these can be dastardly, and they can be the most dastardly when the markets are the most overbought. And I know a lot of you have heard me talk about how incessantly overbought this market is, whether you're using Bollinger Bands, or RSI or stochastics, markets can remain overbought longer than you as a trader can remain solvent trying to pick the opposite direction. So, you know, overbought, oversold indicators, oscillators, they're not really a great uh, top tier indicator as far as I'm concerned. Um, but we may start to be seeing the uh, the effects of an overbought market. A few, uh, I think Goldman and a few other houses started to talk a little bit cautiously yesterday. 
I saw a few of my favorite Twitter followers actually go in there and say, okay, screw it. I'm going to call it. I'm going to, I'm not calling V top, but I'm calling for a correction. And then we had some geopolitical news uh, last night that'll be worked out probably in the state of the union tonight. I'm not going to go too deep there, but um, there was some uncertainty and we gapped down and we really didn't recover that well. As far as I'm concerned, we closed pretty much close to our lows in the S&P. Um, not so much in the queues. We got a nice doji there in the queues. Um, but the point is, is when we get an overbought market like this, the rug can be pulled so fast, your, your head will spin. I mean, and even though we like to use stops in our swing trades, you know, there's no guarantee that if a market starts to turn and get sour, that your uh, stop loss will be safe um, through an overnight gap or a gap down the next day. So, um, you know, I thought we may close on lows. We didn't. That's the good news. Uh, even though S&P, you know, has a nice red candle with a big upside wick, uh, the Dow, uh, you know, kind of a doji with a little spinning top there and the Qs as well. IWM, however, we'll come back and visit that because it was a trade of the week. It was kind of thrown in the towel. It's not looking as healthy as the others. So big gap down today coming on the heels of yesterday, uh, an observation of the VIX, which is simply just people that are long buying insurance protection uh, for their portfolio rather than ejecting and getting out of their, their longs. And so this can sometimes be an early, early warning tell. Um, downside volume. Not something to sneeze at, okay? Relative volume in the S&P finishing near lows, almost 2.0. So downside volume is very important when we, when we see that. If it's light volume pullback, that's one thing. But heavy, heavy downside volume needs a little bit more attention paid to it. Um, and then also, I think, in the diamonds, the Dow had you know, 2.71, almost three times the normal volume. It was down 1.36 today, the Dow, with a big gap. And uh, guys, this could be the beginning of something. We very well could see another gap down tomorrow. So, you know, I'll just say this in a broad brush. If you've got some trades that you're working on outside of what we talk about and you're not quite sure and you're real close to your stop limit here, um, a, a, a red market, a seller's market, a bear market is going to take everything down with it. They're going to back up the paddy wagon and take even the pretty ones. So a lot of times when I get into the trade of the week, I'll talk about how we tried not to, you know, get too involved in um, trend changes. We've got a few trend change uh, open trades. Um, and this week we went with Schwab, which is kind of mirroring, you know, the trend. So we'll talk about those in a moment. But first, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask Andy if there's anything he sees in the market that I may have missed. I'll turn on your microphone if you want. You covered it pretty good. Uh, only thing I'd elaborate on a little bit is um, uh, the VIX, and, and unfortunately, we don't have futures here yet. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, coming around the corner. But uh, even before yesterday, uh, the VIX was kind of. If you look in December, look at the month of December, going into the uh, all the way from back to December. Look at the move the spiders had through that time in December, and look at what the you know the VIX the VIX did during that whole time. In other words, it wasn't going down anymore, which tells you people were getting nervous. People were buying protection by buying puts, what the VIX measures. Uh, so it, it kind of uh, kind of telegraphed it a little bit there, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think the easiest way to put what Andy's saying in another perspective is the S&P and the markets have been trending yep. all the month. The VIX nope. has been basing yep. the entire exactly. month. Okay, These are untold tells that you can turn over rocks and start to get a feel for maybe what some of the underlining uh, momentum or lack of stalling momentum uh, could be. Now, that's a pretty gnarly reversal on the on the VIX there, and that's mm -hmm. typically what the VIX does. It mm -hmm. makes a lot of noise, and then it reverses. It makes a lot of noise, and then it reverses. So we'll see, uh, but yesterday really jumped off the page to me compared to what uh, the indexes were doing. There was a lot of um, insurance being purchased yesterday. Sure volatility uh, uh, S&P put. All right, let's move forward. Uh, next on the agenda, we'll just go right into the AI. A couple of observations from me on the AI. Coming in today, we only had one short. We had a lot of longs, but the entire day, basically, I don't know if there's a better example to call today, Holly, the canary in the coal mine, than what was exhibited today. Let me sort by time. Okay, the first trade of the day was a short, and it didn't go anywhere. Second trade of the day was a long, didn't really go anywhere. Third trade of the day was back to short. 
third, fourth trade of the day, and last trade of the day back to long. So what do we have? We have an incongruity here in terms of directional bias. All last week during test drive, I don't think there was one short, maybe one, but the rest of the trades were all long. And so directional bias is usually my first my first indicator as to what, do, what what data do I want to extract in the bigger picture from the AI. And today the AI showed me it had no directional bias. It was absolutely confused on which direction to go. And none of the trades except for one, I think, actually made it into the money by the end of the day. So what is this telling us, guys? It's telling us, well, we had a nasty gap down in the market. We had a lot of people on Twitter kind of freaking out and wondering what the hell is happening to their swing trades. But then we have the unemotional, uh, statistically probable AI here that's our uh, passenger, our co-pilot, and we look over and we see that the co-pilot is not only sitting on her hands for the most part, but is pretty confused. So some days we're going to have some really nice um, alerts and some really nice setups, but other days what the AI is going to be telling us is the canary in the coal mine is laying flat on its back with its legs up in the air. If the AI can't make sense of what's happening today, that should really tell you as a trader and us to slow things down, cut your share size, go into turtle mode as we used to call it, mm -hmm. and uh, let's try and figure out what's going to happen. Now, what's going to happen today is Holly's going to take all of today's data, which was pretty negative, and run it through the mix of tonight's back testing. I would not be surprised, guys, if we open up tomorrow and see the AI strategy bench here and see not one, but maybe three shorts. I don't know. Maybe I'm way out of line, but I've been watching Holiday long enough to see that, you know, with two days of red candles coming into tonight's back testing session, I'm not going to be surprised if the AI doesn't show a couple of strategies to the short side tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. My biggest concern, if I was a trader right now, would be a big gap down tomorrow. That's honestly, that's honestly my biggest concern. Um, I don't like to get too, you know, news focused, but we do have a very, very significant um, State of the Union this evening with some sideshows around it. Um, I don't know, but when I see a market get weak and the VIX get strong and a big gap down today, we did not buy the market back. We do not have that stick save tail with green bars. We're still closing relatively close to our lows. My biggest fear would be a big gap down tomorrow. I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. going to happen. I'm just saying that's what would keep me up late at night if I was um, um, long across the board. Yep. All right. Um, so that's it for kind of the bigger picture of Holly. There was uh, a clunker of a day, negative 29 cents. I know Andy and I laughed about when we've had bad days in the past. Uh, 29 cents would be uh, much better than sitting there continually trying to buy the dip, buy the dip, doesn't work, buy the dip, buy it again, it doesn't work, buy the dip. And as humans, we went through this and we were stubborn as heck. But when we have an AI that's basically saying, hey, slow it down. Okay, I'm not seeing any edge, and you probably are not seeing any edge either. So that's kind of my story for Holly on the day. Coming into today, it's been pretty impressive all last week and um, uh, even a little bit yesterday. But uh, you know, before I move off of this, did you, did you want to add anything, Andy? Uh, not much to talk about today, Steve. I did notice that THC, if you want to just pull that one up, it was uh, triggered from long, uh, strong stock pulling back. Relatively strong. Yeah, yeah, and uh, interesting enough, when we talk about double confirmation, is that THC, I think if you went up there and took a peek at your uh, extreme volume high-low pro and go to the uh, just uh, – I'm just going to do it the right way. Okay. Here, here, okay. Here's a nice hack, guys. If you ever want to isolate, did my scan catch that symbol today? Here's how it's done. Just go to configure. Okay. Now, the stock we're looking for is THC. So let's go to symbol list, turn off the entire market scan of all symbols, and say only a single symbol, which happens to be THC. So this is a nice, easy way to try and isolate, did my scanner pick up the stock I was looking for? OK, so we're going to launch OK. And look, uh, there it is, THC. I'm going to go to a history just so we can kind of see. But THC came through um, early and often, I think, towards uh, the no, end of the day. No, not early and often, just toward the end of the day. Towards and the end of the day. I, I, I no, thought no, that no, was no, interesting. No. Well, this was, uh, oh, yeah. uh, this okay. was today, right here. No, okay. that's the 22nd. My bad. That's the 22nd, right. My bad. But anyway, so, but, just a kind of double confirmation where Holly, uh, you know, if I'm seeing this come across my, and of course it wasn't, it was kind of close toward the end of the day. But I always get tickled when I see a Holly call and then and then see it uh, kind of confirm. Show up on your other scanner. Exactly. Yeah, that's always uh, 
Uh, it's always a feather in, in Holly's cap, in my opinion. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move back on the symbol list and put it back to where it was, back to all symbols, no symbol list. We're scanning the entire market, and it's going to give us the last two. It's going to give me the last up one was THC, and the last uh, live alert to the downside was that uh, UNM. Yeah, that was pretty ugly. But, uh, yes, I get what Andy's saying. Your double confirmation, you see something on Holly, and then also on a scan can be worth a second look sometimes. But uh, today was a very rough day. I saw a lot of hair pulling and frustration uh, out there in the Twitterville. Seabay was counter to the market as well. Was that, uh, where did you see that one, uh, Christopher? Yeah, look at that. Three days of pullback right mm -hmm. on the fast line. Holly liked that stock back here. So we have a tag here and a tag here. Holly's been kind of on the prowl of Seabay. Surprised I didn't even see that one today, Christopher. Good one. Um, and again, I love the three days of red. Sometimes three days of red pullback is all you need for that move back up, which is kind of what we're going to look at when we go to the trade of the week, Schwab. So let's just go ahead and do that um, right now. So I've got a little cheat sheet over here I want to take a look at so I can make sure I don't miss any of the uh, – trades of the week I'm just going to go back into the the beginning of the year we've got four open trades of the week um, all of them have moved higher into the green but lately they're now back under pressure again so let's look at them one by one here set it and forget it that's right Chris that's, that's good news okay um, first one of the year IWM was lagging uh, it was doing this cup and handle handle thing and basically once it broke out here we had some nice up movement, a little bit of a pullback, and then our zenith up here, IWM, I think, produced about 3.5% before it fell back. And now we're back down to, you know, basically, uh, what is it, 157.29. Uh, we're still above the entry point, but guys, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. So as I go through some of these um, stocks, whether you're in these individual ones or not and looking for guidance or you're in your own swing trading stocks, I do have a caution flag up again, and I, I, my biggest fear is another big gap down. So what's the one thing that can help us jettison our plan of the target and the stop? And, of course, I've always used the word patience is a virtue. Well, there's one thing that can shoot an arrow through the heart of my patience is a virtue, and that's a very rapidly declining general market. So if the backdrop of the market is just sell, 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 you know, you may be wise as a trader to tighten up your risk management a little bit because, you know, uh, if corrections do come, they're not typically a buy the dip one and a half day move higher. They can be, you know, a multi-day, even a couple week event. And um, just trying to raise risk management out there for you guys. If you feel like the trade's not doing what you wanted, recall that Holly has an exit reason called reduced risk. And reduced risk is basically the AI saying, God, it's been in the trade now for 30 minutes it's not going anywhere it's been positive it's been negative it's not doing what the AI expected the AI has the autonomy to close the trade and just call it reduced risk in other words it didn't do what we were thinking why stick around and take this thing all the way down to the bottom and the stop and have a bigger stop loss when the market is clearly telling us that the sellers are back in control so Food for thought on those as we go through these. You know, I know there's certain um, stop losses. The, I think the IBM is basic. Uh, the IWM uh, stop loss is essentially down at 151, but you know that's down here. I would not blame anybody if you know you wanted to move it up to something like here under that last candle, and if it starts to break and breach the prior breakout, which should act as support. Um, then, you know, I, I wouldn't fault you for uh, calling an audible and um, doing what Holly does, reduce risk. So that's IWM. It was up as much as 3.4% at its zenith and now rolling back over. Um, the next one, this was the one do you, during do you the mind week. if I add to that? Yes, please, can I add please. something with that, Steve? And only he talked about Holly having a reduced risk. Everybody should have a reduced mm -hmm. risk. And what that means is you need to define what your stop not only what your stop's going to be, but after you reach a certain percent, uh, say five, eight percent, no, what I mean, you want to raise that stop up. In other words, at a certain level, you do not want it to turn into a losing trade. You know, I would probably draw that around five percent, close to what ID, IWM is up today, because nothing worse than having a little profit or a, or a decent profit and then turn it around and have a losing trade. That can be very disheartening and can. Uh, 
Uh, it, can, it can affect you emotionally as a trader. So, so what you want to do is have your trailing stop. So if a stock gets up 5%, you can tell yourself, okay, the worst I'm going to take now is a break even. I'm going to get out for a flat. You know, so if it, uh, uh, so raise your raise your stops as the stock you know as the stock goes up. Oh, yeah, I mean, and and again, we don't have an example today, but profit save on the AI. That's mm -hmm. what profit save is. Profit save is the AI moving higher in a profit, and then once it gets to a certain level, it triggers a trailing stop, and that trailing stop will basically not allow Holly to take a green trade and close it in red. So it's kind of the same thing, and it speaks to our point perfectly. Holly is a sidekick trader. Watch and observe how the AI trades, how it doesn't trade, what direction it trades, does it use profit save, does it cutting its losses and using reduced risk, you know, things like that. Uh, there's, there's a lot to be deduced from this, you know, sophisticated tool, but in reality, it's just another alert, like you see on my page here, but it just happens to have a lot more statistical probabilities um, behind it. And what Andy was saying was, is yes, it's never fun to let a trade go into the green and then go into red. That's frustrating. It's mentally, uh, emotionally debilitating. It can be demoralizing. It really can. can. Demoralizing, and it doesn't help our account grow. And as we go through the next couple of trades here, this is kind of the case we're in right now, guys. So this is why we're bringing this up. IWM, fortunately, still is in the money. The next one, I believe, is not. Trip. This was when we had our annual meeting, and this was not trying to buy a stock that was trending, but um, for fear of them pulling the rug out and the big gap down, kind of like we had today, and what my biggest fear is tomorrow. So we switched back and forth with different strategies, but this was a trend change stock, um, I'm sorry, a short squeeze. Big short float, 22% uh, short out of um, a float of 125. Um, again, this one, Zenith, I'm going to draw a line right here. This one was creating alpha at one point. Trip was up over 4%, but has since dropped back in. And now is getting actually kind of close to uh, the downside uh, stop, which is going to be um, uh, 34.50. So I've kind of drawn that orange line. You can kind of see. That's, I'm not a fan of what happened today. Yesterday and the day before, I could have taken that because it was holding up back and forth above its moving averages, but now it has closed below this average, this average, and seems to have a B line for this average, and this was prior support back here, so I basically said we don't want to lose this support back here. Um, you know, this one might wind up having to be cut for a loser, but once again, that's the market we're in right now. We started the year off with a bang, so we had some alpha, and then now we're having uh, to make some risk management decisions. Dick's Sporting Goods was last week. And again, we went to the trend change lubricant well, looking for a short float of 18%. And if they could get above that level um, of interest, then we would uh, we would take it. And now, if I recall, the level of interest was on uh, what was it 118 or 120? Yes, it was this day right here. So once we took out this green bar right there, I'm going to mark that up. That was basically um, our entry point, right, right around 34. 3402, just like that. So we had a couple of nice days of upward movement. We got up about 4.5%, 4.3% on that. And then the same story, rolling back over along with the backdrop of the market. So you know, a lot of decisions are going to have to be made for swing traders here if uh, this market doesn't kick back into gear and do what it's been doing lately, which is uh, a buy the dip. Uh, Mark, Mark asks, uh, Steve, what are the three lines behind the candles? Okay, uh, what am I looking for? I think he was probably looking at the uh, moving averages. I would. Uh, are you talking about the horizontal lines or the moving averages? The horizontal lines are just reference points for me. The moving averages are something that we'll talk about shortly after we finish the trade of the weeks. The blue, red, and green. Okay, Mark, these are SMA simple moving averages. I've gotten my charts now to where I kind of uh, have always had them. I'm not using any moving averages in my intraday. I just like a 15-minute chart so I can see how the 15-minute days correlate. I don't use pre-market and post-market. I want to see a linear uh, chain of price. Um, so I don't use it on that. However, you're very observant. Yes, we have. I have a 10 SMA. I have a red 20 SMA and a blue 50 SMA. And I will come back to that because that's going to be right in our next segment, Mark. So hang tough. Don't think that I didn't uh, ditch you on that answer. Um, and as far as those alerts are going, it looks like DKS is trying really hard to, one, stay positive above the uh, the 30 um, 
3402 entry. Oh, actually, that was up here. So DKX is negative. It's trying to stay positive. Now, the actual stop for DKS, it was also very tight. I believe it was 3204, and that's what this orange line is here. Look how close we got yesterday. I laughed at Andy yesterday. They tried to get us on that opening drive down right mm -hmm. here on the opening candle and then popped right back up. So it's very close, and now it just makes perfect sense that the low of this candle, the low of yesterday's candle, which we survived by five cents, and a little bit of slop to work with today, that should be a very hard stop if uh, DKS does not continue to move higher. And if this market continues to sell off, well, pretty good chance this one may get stopped out as well. Mm -hmm. That is the, the low of, of that? that is the low of Friday's candle uh, yesterday's. Pretty much, it's yesterday. about five. It's about five okay. cents below. Well, okay. I, I remember showing you that we survived a stop out by about five cents right. on the con on the content of that email. And if you guys are reading the contents of the emails, I mean, you know, we tried to focus a lot on some of these trend chain type stocks because when the market does fall, these ones don't fall as hard. The ones that fall really hard are the ones that have been trending for a while. But we don't want to get caught up in the same method every week. Uh, so we did notice on our 20-day pullback, a lot of the brokers, Ameritrade, E-Trade, and Schwab were showing up as nice trending stocks moving higher that gave us a nice one, two, three-day pullback. And that little bounce off the red line is Friday. That's the 20-day moving average, and it looks like we had three days of sell-off and a nice bounce, and we were looking for a continuation pattern. We used the um, uh, pulling back to the 20 SMA. Uh, top list stocks that have at least a few days of weakness but find support and bounce at or near above their 20-day moving average and that's what we had just for a little bit of color you know E-Trade had their earnings they gapped down and traded right back up but now they're starting to come under a little pressure even Ameritrade was showing a, a good uh, a good move today but gave half of that move back today but the point was is we didn't want to come in week after week trying to find trend change lubricant stocks that were basing and looking for a short squeeze you know we wanted to try something with maybe a pullback and buy the dip strategy but when we wrote the content the caveat on that was look the stops gonna be really tight on these things because when these high-flying overbought stocks that have been trending forever, when they do decide to roll over, you know, the downside comes in the form of an elevator shaft when the upside took 50, 45 or 50 days using the stairs and the hallways. So mm -hmm. um, big, big cautionary red flag on this one. Don't let this one get away from you. I put the blue line in here to show you where the current stop is, basically 51.95 or roughly just under the congestion of this area, which should be support. So we have a little bit of daylight, but guys, if the market gets really, really, really ugly tomorrow, you know, that might be the decision that you have to make uh, to cut some of your swing trades and wait for better setups. Hey, Steve, um, be yep. before you move out, zoom, zoom out on that again. Just it's, it's kind of a good practice when you're uh, when you're into swing trading uh, and go back to that um, middle of September there. Uh, you can no, no, I'm sorry. Don't zoom out that far. You can you can zoom back in a little bit. Go to the middle of September. No, a little bit further That's back. November. Nine. Uh, okay, see that uh, see that green candle there, uh, the big volume. The bottom of that, draw a trend line if you don't mind. To and just, I, I'm just curious to where that uh, where that uh, uh, pops in here. It's probably not going to be where you like it. Well, it may not be. I think we're going to be above it. I think we're going to because I eyeballed no, it. I I gonna be, we're going oh, to be, gonna be well well above it, but I just want to see if it marries up anywhere with that 50 period moving average. Yeah, a little bit above that. Okay. That could be a level. Yeah, we're looking at. I was hoping it would be tighter, but um, uh, and be uh, and be above your uh, stop there. I take it that uh, price alert is your stop. This is what the IAI. This is the uh, brokerage ETF uh, that I'll monitor on my sector ETF, and this is what it looked like. Take away these two red candles. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. I just zoomed out two days, got rid of those two. That's what the IAI looked like going into the weekend. Pretty strong sideways action right above the 10 day fast line moving average like a bird in the hand ready to take flight but we never really know what the true market backdrop is going to be and the true market backdrop has been under pressure the last two days so they'll take the pretty ones too if that happens so i mean i think the tenor here is you know, we got a little bit of alpha on the upside for some of these but and again andy and i mentioned that this is going to be the kind of year we had you know unbelievable in 2017 in terms of uh, index performances was the Dow up 40%? Is that, was that the number, something along those lines? 
Um, don't expect to be seeing those kind of numbers again this year. I mean, I think it's entirely possible we can have an up year, but to try and um, think we're going to just get the band back together and do everything that we did last year and have these incredible um, unrepentant rallies with no pullbacks and no showers and, and no corrections, I don't think we're going to have that this year. So what I'm getting at is we're going to try and focus the trade of the weeks this year for a little bit more quick hit and miss. Tighter stops, tighter targets, get in, get out. You know, the year of buying Weight Watchers at 12 and watching it run all the way to 75 in one year is probably not, I'm not really anticipating that kind of action this year. So we're going to try and, uh, you know, get a feel maybe, for Maybe even some pullback entries too. You know? And maybe even some pullback entries, not, you know, not buying the breakout, but waiting for that third day pullback at a level that shows um, significant support and resistance. And that might mean that we miss a few trades, but better to miss a few trades than to uh, be early and then get stopped out. All mm -hmm. right. Um, what's next before we can go to questions? Uh, I think real quickly, the um, the new version, and that dovetails with the um, uh, charts. So the new version, uh, let me see if I can find my We'll just go here and we'll go to trade ideas for those that are not aware. Uh, the easiest way to download the product is just really go to the products page and scroll on down. And this is where most people get hung up. Download the latest production version. Well, we make it available to those who want to get ahead of the curve to download the newest beta version. And in the newest beta version, we have a lot of stuff that people are noticing, such as charts. Um, I can find a couple of uh, interesting setups. Uh, probably not, but you know, for the most part, here's the cues. We'll just look at the cues, and we've got my 10, my 20 day, and my 50 day. These are all SMAs. Now. It begs the question, a lot of people get frustrated that we don't have a lot of filters for EMAs, and I know a lot of people choose exponential moving averages as well, but to create a new filter, it's a, dire, it's, it's a tedious process that has to be done on all across all time frames for that same filter. So it's not like we can just pop in, write some code, and throw in some new filters. It's, it's, it takes some work, and we do have other priorities we're working on. So what I'm going at is, for some of you that may be upset that we don't have a lot of EMA filters, it's mostly SMA for our stock screeners and settings and scanners, we do now have the ability, and watching here in the new version, if we right click and go down to indicators, well, we have the average volume line, we've got EMA, we've got RSI, and my favorite, simple moving averages, and then volume. So theoretically, if somebody is really wanting to use an EMA9, well, we could go indicators, Let's go EMA, here comes our window, it'll be at the bottom, and there it is, EMA. I want to make an EMA 9, and I want that EMA 9 to be uh, cyan in color, <laughs> and uh, whatever else I want to do to it. So that would be how you could launch a new exponential moving average on a 9 period. Okay, um, chart area. Uh, the volume and the RSIs go down to the chart area number two. This is this bottom box. Chart area number one is basically the main um, pricing window. So with those new uh, beta versions, you're going to get crisper volume lines, and you're going to get um, the ability to add the moving averages. And also these gradients, these chart gradients, they've been kind of experimenting between how dark or light do they really want them to be. But I assume at some point we're going to be able to have user control over the uh, suggested stop and these suggested target lines that do show up in all of our charts. And uh, so if you're not on the new beta version and you're wondering why your charts don't look the same, get on that new beta version and uh, you'll have the same type of uh, look and setup. How are we doing on questions, Andy? Uh, let's see. We're doing pretty good. Let's see. Is the point I want to see? Uh, Kenneth, I do see your question. Uh, you know, if you can send it back, I went actually went over to our uh, uh, our email server. Are you sending that to info at trade ideas dot com? Uh, and please uh, get, give me your last name as well, so I can do a search and find out, and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, okay. I wasn't going to leave you hanging. I was definitely going to come around to it, and just Steve can can. Can ramble sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so Joe is answering, well, how can I do some other indicators? Well, again, it would be the same drill. Uh, if you want um, uh, RSI, 
Okay, well, there's our window again. Let's scroll down to the bottom. There's our new one, RSI. We want to put it in the bottom chart area, and uh, we can change the periods and change the colors. So, I mean, essentially, to answer your question, it's just to right click and come down here to indicators. This is our first set of indicators. I'm hoping on our second set of indicators and the next release in a few months down the road, we may have some VWAP in there. A lot of people do like to look at that as well. So it really is as simple as that. Now, once you've got them in there, if you want to modify them, you can click the modify indicators, go in, change a color, change a period, change a section, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right, yeah, thanks, Kenneth. Well, if Andy said he'll pay attention, he'll pay attention to make sure you get um, uh, the attention you're looking for by sending that in. With an e-signal versus standalone, um, are there any then limitations to trade ideas between e-signal and standalone? These questions always stump me because we've had a Scott trade version, we've had an e-signal version, we've got uh, the, the one that you just asked about, um, which one was it, uh, e-signal or trade station? You know, Andy, do you know really the main differences between uh, e-signal and Trade Ideas Pro? The e the main difference between e-signal yeah. and Trade, trade Ideas. Ideas Pro? Yeah, between the the e-signal version that has Trade Ideas built into it. It's a lighter wear version. Yeah, I've I've seen it once. And see, unfortunately, we don't have access to uh, we, uh, we, everybody can't have demos to play around with them. Uh, I have seen it once, uh, and it's 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 basically similar similar to what you see in Scott Trade and. Uh, uh, it's it's going to have your basic, all your charting uh, features. You will have access to the cloud, uh, uh, but it's going to be, uh, you're, obviously, you won't have any of the AI holly. You won't have any price alerts. Uh, Back testing. Uh, you won't have any charting, uh, I don't think, but you won't need it with these signal, obviously. Um, I'm not sure about the back testing either. No, yeah, I don't think you will have access to back testing. Cloud links, so, sharing it's, cloud. It's, it's, it, yeah, yeah. You, I think you can do cloud links. You can share cloud links, and you have access. To, I think you have access to the cloud, but uh, and obviously you have all the uh, access to the charting, except maybe for uh, 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 so what is it? Well, uh, using e charts. Yeah, I'm not sure you have functionality of uh, Symbolist, but uh, uh, other than what we provide, the pre-configured ones that we provide, but. Uh, uh, All right. Check with eSignal. I think they would. Uh, they yeah, have check it. with eSignal and let them give you a breakdown of what it does have, and then maybe you can compare and contrast. And of course, info at Trade Ideas for more information. We can forward that to somebody who knows like the ins and outs of the differences. I'll answer a couple quick more questions here, then we'll wrap it up. Um, Darcy, is Broker Plus still worked on? Yes, a broker a Brokerage Plus is still in beta, still being worked on. Um, uh, if you want any information on that, info at Trade Ideas.com. Uh, does Trade Ideas link to um, TD Ameritrade? And I do have to TD Ameritrade, and Trade Ideas does not link to Ameritrade. Lance, if you haven't done so already, come in during market hours tomorrow to our live support, which is on our homepage, and ask for Bill. Bill is kind of the resident guy who's been collecting a database and library and creating PDFs on step by step trying hard to keep up with the latest APIs of the other brokerage platforms because once they change their API, kind of throws off our external linking. So Bill is the guy you want and um, either help scout, meaning uh, info at trade-ideas.com or come on in for live support tomorrow during market hours. Um, yes, Lance, so that should be good there. Um, Canadian stocks, Tyler, trade ideas will show real-time data. However, I must give you a major caveat for, for Canadian stocks. Their data feed is limited. Alerts will go off in real time. Prices are in real time. But if you want to get like how much volume has the stock done, we don't get that data. You've got to use the volume data. So you've got to get those directly from your Canadian brokers. So we have a lot of people that use trade ideas for the Canadian markets, but some of the volume data points that get reported back to us can be limited. But the workaround for that is to use um, your broker. All right, I think this is going to be the last one. In the last webinar, I saw you guys um, highlight just the symbol on one of the T boxes and send them to a watch list. How can we do that? Um, okay. Um, so on the a couple different ways to do that. 
The first way is the most recent way that we built, which is called this heart channel. I just left my complete layout to go to the heart channel. And what's on the heart channel? Well, we've got a top list, and everything in this list at one time or another, you can see the heart is a solid heart on the chart, meaning for some reason I liked it. And so clicking the heart symbol automatically throws the symbol into the my liked symbol, which is basically uh, created here on the my liked symbols channel bar. The top list will allow me to see, all right, of all the stocks I liked recently, oh, it looks like VMware is doing the best relative volume today. That's interesting. Of all the stocks I've liked recently, who's doing the best uh, change from the close, et cetera, et cetera, however you want to sort those data points. So that's what the top list is there for. Conversely, there's an alert window, which basically has a lot of alerts. It's not something you could ever back test, but it's just showing us in real time, hey, the last thing to come through was VMware in post-market high. Okay, interesting. So that's one way in which you're able to create, and I'll go back to my um, layout here, load default layout. Okay, so just clicking on a chart, you know, bringing up something that's of interest, and, um, you know, looking at it, uh, you know, what does Siri look like lately? You know, nothing really major. But if I wanted to keep an eye on Siri for a pullback, they'd be down to these levels. I could just go heart, and now everything is on that channel. And you could take it one step further. You could go to that channel, and you could right-click inside of that top list window and save it to your cloud and then bring it into your main layout so you don't even have to go to that channel. So everything that you heart will go be thrown into that list. Everything that you unheart will be taken out of that list. The second and more cumbersome way to uh, monitor and track single stocks is to use the um, symbol list where you could create something that says, you know, uh, watch list. I'll start with this one, watch list. We'll just use that, okay? So all of a sudden I see this BW and I like BW. I could go down and say send BW to symbol list and go ahead and put it in my watch list. And that's as easy as one click. I don't have to go in and manually type it. So there's two ways really to answer that question that you had. Um, and uh, that would be the best way I can answer that. Um, yeah, you can also highlight symbols and you can create, you know, going back to the uh, symbol list, you know, create new list right here, call it whatever you want, and then, um, you know, call it faves. It's a blank window. If I go find it, faves, oops, that's not the one, faves. And then you could just start typing in symbols as you go, things like that. All right. You know, that uh, that um, uh, I think Steve, you did show her how to uh, if you want to uh, grab certain a number of symbols in a row and send them to a watch list, right? How to do that? Okay, so we can do that as well, right? Um, so let me find something with a little bit more uh, symbols in there. Squeeze me probably has a few, mm -hmm. so we could go like that yep. and right throw click. all of them in there. Send to symbol there list, go. watch list. Boom just increase by yep. nine or ten symbols all right guys well that's all we've got for you today um, appreciate everybody showing up and uh, appreciate good questions and, and good comments good feedback um, this webinar week is normal week we always invite any of you guys that want to come by on Friday uh, it's open mic <laughs> even though we only have the open mic you guys have open question box and we can uh, demonstrate some stuff uh, for three hours no content Lucy Goosey, first come, first serve. Keep an eye on your emails uh, for those Friday tech support sessions. All right. Um, this webinar will be saved. Uh, Scott is recording it. Scott will upload it to our YouTube channel. Uh, give it about three or four hours. And we do this with all of our standard webinars. You can hit it at the YouTube channel. All right. Thanks so much for your guys' comments. I'll put the slideshow back up, and Scott can come in and talk about a few uh, open items here. Hey, thanks, Steve. Yeah, just uh, roll through a few things and then talk about the specials. So uh, our podcast, uh, we're back on the air with our podcast. We just had our second episode this season uh, last Friday, so make sure you're subscribed and uh, then listen to the back issues and prepare for the next one on Friday. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And 
that is all you need to do. Uh, and then you get all the new episodes uh, downloaded right into your device. We have a price change. This is the big thing that's coming up in February. On February 15th, we are rolling our prices up by about 20% across the board. And that's on the next slide. We have the highlights of that. So we're going up by about 20% across the board, but the good news for everyone that's already a subscriber by that point is you stay in the old rates. So if you subscribe at the 2017 rates and we raise the prices, as long as your subscription's active, you remain at the 2017 rates. So that is something that we always do. Every time we raise prices, we let everyone at the previous rate stay grandfathered in. We still have quite a few subscribers paying $43 a month and they started subscribing way back when, you know, years ago. So, uh, you know, you can still maintain your current uh, subscription as in the face of the uh, price increase. Uh, so that goes along with uh, also we have a sale. And here is the opportunity for you to get in on the 2017 rates and stay there and get a big saving. So uh, we have a test drive code for the end of the test drive, and it's January driver, all caps. And uh, that is the code you're going to want to use before the uh, end of tomorrow night. That's the thank you for our test drivers for participating in the test drive and giving them a big advantage to get in to the current rates and trade ideas with a big discount on that first installment and lock that in. So if you get your first installment locked in at 1888 a year, even though it's going up over 2200 um, you'll be locked in at that rate every year going forward, and you can save 22% off your first year, which I believe is about uh, 1460 something like that. So you've got big savings on the first year, maintain that uh, ongoing low rate. Same thing for the monthly or the standard, uh, same deal. Uh, just go ahead and save huge on that first installment with the code, and then you are safeguarded against the increase in rates in February. It's an inoculation. We also have another code, but that also ends at the end of this month, and it's new trades. It's only 15% off which is normally a great discount, but we have the 22% off code, so I just recommend everyone use January Driver, get in on those big savings. And uh, you have until tomorrow night to uh, decide to use the code. Um, if you have any questions about anything on the webinar or any of the price changes or any of our software, email us info at trade-ideas.com, or you can go ahead and shoot Steve an email, steve at trade ideas. Andy is reachable at andy at Steve is also a Today Trader on Twitter, and we also have at Trade Ideas and at Trade Ideas One, several other handles, and then also find us on Facebook, Trade Ideas Pro, and follow us there so we can share all kinds of cool stuff with you. Uh, thanks, Steve and Andy. Right. We'll have the recording up later. Sounds good.